I trip and this raccoon is following me around, man. Come on. Alright, gotta get my stuff in the van. Welcome to Tennessee at 11.40 at night. You've arrived. Alright. Made it uh, about a two and a half hour drive. It is about midnight and I'm getting ready to go to bed. Didn't plan too great, didn't put my bed in here, so I'll be sleeping on that pad. Right about here. Took the paramotor out and just covered it in tarp so dew doesn't get it, but this is a beautiful airport. I'm gonna get some rest because I'm gonna be waking up in about six hours or less. See you then. Okay, it's about 30 to 32 minutes prior to sunrise. Got the wing laid out. Luckily, I have a little bit of a headwind. It's kind of light and variable at times, so I really hope it doesn't switch the tail. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna hook in and get going. Belt slipping. All right. Full RPM plus some. Alright, good heading. Already going 23 knots. I should be fighting a headwind initially. But it's a beautiful morning already. Howdy, howdy, guys. I'm still climbing. Uh, about 6,300 feet. Searching for that good tailwind. The sun still hasn't risen, but it's absolutely gorgeous. It is cold. Thank you, Elena, for your UGE jacket. And the sun has risen. Woo! We're picking up speed a little bit, 8,000 feet. It is just gorgeous. I mean, this cloud coverage, little holes everywhere that I could go through if needed. It is October in the North Carolina mountains. Colors. Pretty incredible. push it a little further to a gas station up here that has much better fields. Might need to climb a fence, we'll see. But uh, gotta do what you gotta do. Part of the adventure. Just hope I don't run out of gas before I get there. Coming up on my first fuel stop. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm burning a lot more fuel than expected. 
I was hoping to go four hours, uh, but I am heavier and I've been flying trims out. I've never landed here. We're about to see how it is. It looks like a great field. And I saw there's a McDonald's, pretty sweet. Oh, my hands are frozen. Also, another bad thing is my belt's been slipping, which has not happened on this unit yet. So it's about time to, about time to tighten it, obviously. So I might do that on the ground here. I brought some tools, we'll see. It's really only a full power thing. Yeah, right there, you can hear it. So that could be bad for takeoffs. So I should mess with that. Yeah, it's looking good right here. Winds are pretty nil. Oh yeah, this is a great spot. And we'll have a good takeoff too. Storage unit, farmer's field, got a power line there. All right. <laughs> I love this. First fuel stop. Right over the power line. Woo! Coming in hot. That's what I want though. Oh, I can't kill it because my hands are so cold. <laughs> so I didn't wear gloves that whole time and we were definitely in the 30s for a lot of that flight but Woo! all right let's make some moves i'm gonna take this this guy and the motor and um go get some gas so this is how much fuel i had it's always so hard to tell in flight because of the angle right so it looks like i had a liter and a half so uh, I could have gone further, but I think I made the right decision. So I'm gonna go get some fuel. Alright, I'm putting faith in humanity that no one steals that. Time to make some fuel. Woo. We're going on an adventure. Pretty full. Should be around 66 to 1, maybe, hopefully. Well, this wasn't supposed to be a fly to McDonald's video, but uh, kind of shaping up to be that. I gotta get some food. Had to do a little maintenance. I was having issues at full power and definitely don't want that on a takeoff. Man, I just missed my McDonald's takeoff. That's lame. I just ate there, filled there. Forgot to turn the camera on naturally. <laughs> it was just a fine takeoff, nothing wrong with it. First time go. Moving on to the next one, man. And get some out too, get some tailwind. Uh, but I'm currently passing in front of Piedmont Triad International. Uh, which, I don't know, is that Winston Salem? I don't know where that is. I'm not sure I can make the coast. The only way I could really make the coast is with really quick gas stops. We'll see if I can do it. I got like, three-ish liters in my tank right now, I think. So I need to start finding a good fuel stop. I've definitely done a lot of mileage so far. Uh, I don't know how much, maybe like 250 or something. So, and it's like 2.13 p.m. So I'm gonna fly into this airport uh, to see if they have fuel. Couldn't imagine that uh, nobody would be here. Oh, it's a Sunday, gosh. Way to go, Mark. I'm really, really, really hoping that's self serve. If not, we're wasting time. Alright. Oh, yeah, stretch those legs. Oh! <laughs> Touched on a little hard. That's alright. <laughs> Wow, a little sinky sink. Surprised my feet. Well, I just landed at an airport without fuel. So, oh, that was dumb. I couldn't get in contact with them. So, took a chance and it was not a good chance. So, I'm gonna take off again. There's a gas station nearby. This might be ruining my chances though of making it. Um, but the gas station is real close. And it has a really big field. We got one liter of fuel, <laughs> so no lollygagging is allowed. Straight to the gas station. 
Hopefully I can make it. I think I'll be able to make it. Alright. Let's go get some fuel. Try not to get blocked by this turbulence over the trees. Woo! Holy mackerel! I'm gonna scream like a girl. I have made it. The airport I was at is that clearing over there, way over there. Gas station's down here. So that's good. Let's see if anyone's got a flag out. Yep, yep, he's got a flag. That'll help with my wind direction. I kind of have an idea based off how I took off, but the field looks nice. Really hope they don't mind. Oh, coming in hot. <laughs> That'll do. All right, let's go get some gas. This is the really, really hard part. I need to, I need to get over there. I don't know. This was supposed to be fast, but this is not working out. Uh, Tennessee, North Carolina border this morning. I think if we could just sit it on this post and balance it, I could climb over. Is it on there? You got it? Good. <laughs> See, that's stronger. Got that side. Hold it higher. The strap. Let me get it. There we go. All right. It's a good question. It'll be uh, 24 pounds heavier too. Thank you very much. Yeah, he just needs to refuel. Landed with uh, half a liter. Oh, that's fun. All right, gotta get back up in there. Some, I, uh, somebody else helped me up, which is really nice. Wait a little more, of course. Try to record the takeoff this time. Unfortunately, I did not get this takeoff either because as you saw, I left my GoPro running on the refuel, so it died and I figured it out in flight and had to charge it. I am about two hours out and I'm going about 66 miles an hour at 5400. Happy to be away from Raleigh. Wasn't even inside the airspace and <laughs> airliners flying around at 4,000 feet. That's, that was enough for me. I am tired. I did not help that the last airport no gas and had to fly to another spot and climb over a fence and all that. And I haven't drank much water, not even half a liter, probably a quarter liter. Two biscuits from McDonald's and some snacks this morning. It's 4 p.m. No, it's 5 p.m. I'm tired. Whew. So I'm officially not going to make it to the coast today, but that was just icing on the cake if I could cross North Carolina in one day. I should have another 50 minutes until I get there, which would put me arriving at sunset. All right, sketchy water crossing with fuel left. Yowza. That's my out. That's my back, back of a backup outs is that bridge. You'd hate to get your wing caught on a car that didn't see you coming. But, uh, I'm good now. I got plenty of spots. Uh, airport's right there because I only have two liters, which I'm trimmed out. I don't know how many minutes that would be, but I'm just kind of following the town rather than cutting it that way because this is all marsh. It's really not landable.
but we're here. Yo! <laughs> that is it for tonight. While I'm not quite a kitty hawk yet, uh, I'm very close uh, within probably an hour and I flew 443 miles in one day, uh, taking off before sunrise and landing at sunset. Uh, now it's time to get some fuel and we'll see what we got to offer here. Doesn't look like anyone's here, but I wish I could get a code or something. So let's do this. Been doing a good job at using all my fuel, that's for sure. What do you think, about a liter? Sometimes it's hard to tell when you're in flight because it looks more like this. But that was good for the water crossing. I probably shouldn't have, but in an attempt to not pee during the flight, I kind of dehydrated myself and didn't drink. I probably had like, oh my gosh, look at the mood. <laughs> Ah, uh, phones don't do it justice. That is crazy. Wow. ADD. Ah, uh, so I probably the whole day I drank less than a quarter of a liter. This thing was practically full still. And I just chug it. And it was the best water I've ever had in my entire life. So thankful for this. <laughs> You don't even understand. Just woke up right here. I used my jacket as a blanket. My GoPro was my alarm clock because it just turned on, but 15 minutes before my alarm clock, so worked out. Yummy. Even yummier unlabeled chicken. Don't think I showed what I had in my bag on the trip, so I'll show you. Oil mixer, whole thing of oil, gloves, rain fly that I would have used if I camped out and put over the motor and me, water, backpack with stylus, fly master, sleeping bag pad, radio, tent stakes, random pen. And I didn't even use these because I stayed in that place. So I carried a bunch of weight for no reason. All right, that's where I stayed. Um, I'm gonna set my wing up out over this taxiway. I mean, it's not even, I think it's 30 minutes prior to sunrise already and it's already doing that. I am excited for how gorgeous that's going to be. I'm going to go ahead and apologize for the GoPro video because it's always kind of crappy this uh, in this darkness. But um, I'm going to get set up. Very thankful for a little bit of wind and a huge area to take off. Smoke says I'm laid out right. First time with 100 low lead in this. And full disclaimer, I have a six inch tear in the back of my wing that I knew about before starting this trip. And I'm not centered. Felt like I was. All right. Hope this goes off without a hitch. Yep, I'll take it. All right, let's gain some altitude and we'll go over the bridge. We're up at 2,000 feet, MSL and AGL, because we're at the beach. Uh, but yeah, I'm about to do the bridge crossing. Wanted to get high enough so I could glide to shore if something were to happen. And then back up, like I said, is the bridge. But I think the wind's coming from the north, so once I turn, South, I should be cruising across the bridge. Let's find out. <laughs> Little sliver of concrete down there. Oh my. Water crossing has been safely accomplished. I will call this finish due to uh, being able to glide easily to shore. There she is, folks, flying off into the sunrise. It's huge. The sun is so much bigger on the coast. That's the way we're going. Lead the way, sun. I got music going right now, and it is 
even more majestic. So I'm going 51 knots now. Let's release the Kraken. 51. 57. 60. All right, we got ourselves another water crossing here. I don't know what this next island is called, but it's got a wildlife refugee on it, so we'll stay to the uh, Alligator River National Wildlife Refugee. Did I say refugee? Uh, alligator refugees. They've escaped from the neighboring country of Crocodile Island. I don't know, man. Uh, it's getting to me. Here we go. Another water crossing. There's Dare County Regional Airport right there. I'll do another fuel check here in a second to make sure I can make it down the coast in that intimidating looking. I'll come on down to 2,000 feet so I can catch those north winds down the shoreline. And then I'll have to fight the winds to come back. So I want to make sure I got enough fuel. So if I have to fuel up at uh, Dare County, I will. So let me do some checks. I've decided that I'm going to continue on with the fuel that I have, which I think is about 11 liters. I've trimmed in, so I should be able to maintain about four liters an hour. So I'm still going 55 knots trimmed in this way. So I should easily be able to make it to Rodanth in no time. And then I'll drop to 2000 feet and fight the headwind coming back. I should have plenty of fuel. Uh, worst case, you run out of fuel and land on the beach and call for help. We are almost officially at the end point. I am very excited. Eastern point of North Carolina all the way from the furthest western point Actually even further west because I started in Tennessee But this tier down below Is as east as you can get And I'm on top of it and a little further out because the ocean Wow took an hour and a half this morning to get um, From that I think Edenton Airport right here we're here everyone Woo once i fly over the pier it's time to go back i just did my last fuel check i'll try to remember to keep the video i've been deleting them because they take up space but uh i should have like nine liters should have plenty to get back maybe refuel at air county regional <laughs> mission accomplished oh my gosh wow thanks for following along everyone got more flying to do Quite a bit actually. I'm past all the restrictive areas and I'm about ready to start crossing water again. What kind of trip would it be if you flew from the west to the east and didn't touch land? Let's go. I haven't flown this straight level for a while. <laughs> Just do a little foot drag and drag. Here we go. And we have touched the ground. 
This is awesome. I got some dude on a dinghy following me. <laughs> Sick. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. What's up, dude? Wow, he has wheels on that too. That might be the coolest thing ever. I mean, you're always safe. You can fly over whatever you want. Take off from an airport, fly over water with the wheels up. All right, that's the next thing I'm getting. Dare County Regional Airport for fuel. I still have an hour of fuel left if I stay trims in. Man, this, this thing is really efficient when you're trimmed in on the on the 20 meter Falcon. Oh man, I smell like 100 low lead. It's the first time mixing ab gas in this paramotor and it smells so good. It smells like memories from being a teenager. All right. Here we are, time to get some fuel. Howdy. Good. Uh, I can probably do self. So if you ever land at an airport, this is how it's done. Grounded it on the cylinder head, uh, pumping gas. 21 bucks worth paid in there with the credit card. So I estimated it. We'll see how right it is. I'll stop it if I have to, so I have space for oil. I was a little short. I could use more. Actually, enough might drain out because it leaves a little bit that I can, I'll be good. So I just wanted to show this little bit. Always leave enough space for uh, oil as you can see them pretty close but if you fill that fuel all the way up and you put oil in up last then you're out of luck so leave space and uh yeah i got a calculator to make sure i'm putting the right oil i did 50 to 1 this time because i wasn't exactly sure on the fuel amount so i didn't want to do 66 to 1. oh i have to turn my wing around four times ready to go shifty winds All right. Woo! All right, took off from Dare County Regional as you saw. And it's a slow going compared to yesterday, going 30 knots. Uh, it's across over a bunch of marsh. Interesting terrain out here. And I got another couple, let's see, one more crossing actually, and then I'll be on solid ground all the way to probably Tarboro for fuel. Raleigh. It's all restricted airspace off to my left. Uh, I don't know how far it is. A couple of miles. It probably starts around those fields, but yeah, a long time ago, me, Woody, Gabe, and Ross did this route, and so this is very familiar. It's a little rowdy. I'm only at 1,200 feet today. 1,640 foot tower. There's where I took off this morning, which is funny because I've been flying this morning for a total of three hours. It's taking me three hours to get to that point, whereas this morning, flying to the coast, it only took me an hour and a half. <laughs> so, fighting quite the uh, headwind to come back to Raleigh. All right, making a fuel stop shy of where I wanted to make a fuel stop at the airport. Not gonna make it. Looks like a pretty good spot to land. All right. I think I'm gonna walk along the edge of the field. All right, that'll do. I think it was a tailwind, but whatever. 
Let's gather this up and go get some fuel. Looks like I was right from the sky. About a little passageway here. Oh good, there's no water in it either. Leaving the wing. Looks like some soybeans. Gas station white building. This guy is going to watch me fly. This guy. Drawing a little bit of crowd in this uh, city. It's funny. They're not. What's up? <laughs> So yeah, behind the school over there. Oh shoot, and these two people are coming to watch. Whew. Got the crowd. Oh, that's a quality Frisbee. That's an ultimate Frisbee 175 gram, if I ever seen one. Uh, there you go, kids. So I think it was 175 back when I used to play. Oh, they're right behind me now. Hoping the wind cooperates. Got a ditch in front of me is easily doable for the breeze. Ah. I was off the ground just before the ditch. <laughs> When I had the good breeze, it would have been off way before, but uh, today is a really hard day to figure out takeoffs when you have light and variable midday is the absolute worst time to be taking off. You lay out one way and then you hook in and it's thermal stuff through and ruined it for you. Edwin started to get strong, so I've resorted to flying about 670 feet right now, uh, somewhere over Tarboro area. Hey, look. Cock patch up ahead, don't see many of those. North Carolina at least. I've got plenty of fuel and I've got that tower out in front of me as a reference to where I'm going. If I see something fun in my path, man, I'm just gonna go down there and check her out. Been flying high this whole trip. Time to have a little bit of fun every once in a while. Woo. Tobacco. It's been a long time since I've seen tobacco up close and personal. When I was staying in Fayetteville, it was a little more common. Woo! Tower is 1,962 feet tall. But uh, you gotta watch out for the guy wires on this guy. I don't know if you can see it, but it connects down there on the ground. Woo! All wires. Pretty nice base jump. Where you at, Tucker? 12 and a half miles from my destination, so this uh, goofing off and route has been a relief. All right, all right. This is on my route. I can't help it. I have no idea what stadium this is. Mud cats. Where are the mud cats, guys? All right, party people, I made it. Woo! And uh, now my buddy Ross is down here to welcome me, give me a ride back to Asheville. He was headed that way anyway, so this is super convenient. And this was the uh, kind of the start of our Kitty Hawk adventure back in the day, too. So cool being back here. Crosswind landing, I guess. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Howdy! And that's Ross up in the tower over there. That's his van. Good stuff. Good times. All right, we're headed off into the sunset back west. 
Ross, my buddy, helped to prepare an Uber for the day. Hope you give me five stars. Yeah, I will. Don't worry about it. But Ross, he's been on a lot of my adventures. We landed at the same airport we took off from to go to Kitty Hawk that one time. Yep, yeah. So that was cool, ending this trip there. Ross was already headed west, so he gave me a ride. Um, Thanks, Ross. And then this is his van, uh, and this is how the paramotor's making it back to Western North Carolina. Thanks everyone for joining me on the trip. Thanks Ross for the ride. All right, see you guys. See y'all. I am finally back at the airport I started this trip at in Tennessee. Put my wing right here up against the fence and I took off that direction, swung around and started heading east. Nice little airport, freshly paved. And uh, thanks owner for letting me fly from here.